I'll come back. Well, winning the lottery and not telling your wife could get you in a lot of trouble. Ray Sobeski found this out firsthand when he made history in Canada by winning $30 million in the Super 7 jackpot. He's now being sued by his ex-wife for half the winnings. Joining us in studio to sort all the mess out is family law lawyer Stephen Benmore. Welcome back to the show. Hi, Rita. Uh, great to have you back on after the holidays. Thank you. This case... Stephen, it's really, I mean, it's at the forefront. So many people are interested in this, and you and I were talking about this during the commercial, and I said to you, you know, it's got all the great makings of a Hollywood film. Sure, here in Canada. Absolutely. So take us back. Tell us a little bit about this gentleman here, Ray Sobeski. He wins the Super 7 lottery, made Canadian history $30 million, and at the time that he won it, he was married? Yes. Now, remember, we're basing all of this information on a lot of third-party right. media sources. Um, I, myself, for example, went onto our legal database to read all cases that have been reported in Ontario, and the sebesky Ionson case is nowhere to be found. So there hasn't been any formal rulings in court. In fact, the reason we hear about it today is only because uh, in the last month these people were in court and the media um, learned of it and reported it, and uh, so therefore we're aware of it. But right. as far as the judicial side of this case goes, there hasn't really been any formal decisions by a judge of Ontario that we are aware of. Right. So we are basing most of all, uh, most of the information that we have on what we would call hearsay. We're, we're basing it on what we've heard. And in fact, even if we were to go into the courthouse and pull the file, because I believe it's a London, Ontario court case, we would simply be reading what one person says about the other one. We don't know what the truth is. So when one person says we were married on this date and the other person says, no, we were married on this other date, and one person says we were only together for seven days and the other person says, no, we were together for five years, who are we to believe? A judge hasn't made a determination as to who's telling the truth and who's telling a uh, falsehood right now. Right. So we'll, we'll keep throwing in those words. It's alleged. <laughs> uh, she right now alleges that, you know, he didn't come forward about the money until after they were divorced and she figures that you know he won it at the time that they were married so she's entitled right. to the money so let's just talk in general then when sure. it comes to a marriage and you've been married whether it's a year to ten years does that make a difference in the courts if the your spouse has won the lottery and decides that they want to divorce you and then comes forward and says you know I've got the winning ticket here well, the general rule is this um, First of all, the people have to be married. So what I'm about to say doesn't apply to people that are unmarried living common law. Okay. So assuming a couple is married, the law says that whatever the increase of their net worth is from the date of marriage to the date of separation is to be shared. So if, uh, if a couple got married and they split up a year later or 25 years later, the increase in their net worth is what's shared. It doesn't matter whose name it was registered in. In fact, historically, a house may have been registered in the husband's name, and then they split up 5 or 10 or 25 years later. Does that mean he gets to keep the house? No. It doesn't matter whose name it's registered in. In fact, a lot of professionals today register their houses in their wives' name so as to protect that asset from being seized by a, an aggrieved client. So it doesn't matter who the property is registered to. The property is family property, and any growth from the date of marriage to the date of separation is shared. So if you won a lottery a day after you got married or a day before you split up, that is family property that needs to be shared. Now there is one caveat that says if a marriage was for five years or less, a judge has the power to order an amount that is different than 50-50, maybe 70-30, maybe 40-60. Straight application of the law says for a marriage, even if it's for one year, it's it, it results in a 50-50 division of the family assets, of course, after subtracting any family debts. Right. So clearly some families, from the date of marriage to the date of separation, increase their debts, in which case there's not much to share there other than debts. Right. But in most cases, there's a, a positive figure at the end of the marriage, whether it's um, a large sum or a small sum, and that sum, whatever that net increase is, is to be shared. So in her case, whether it's a two-year marriage or a 10-year marriage, she, by straight application of the law, is entitled to 50% of it. If he wants to try to convince a judge that there's no reason, given the fact that the marriage was only five years or less, that she should get 50%, he might be able to succeed 
in, in convincing a judge that it should be other than 50-50, maybe 60-40 or 70-30 or 20-80, depending on um, the circumstances surrounding this short-term or under five-year marriage. In many cases, particularly a case like this, it's very hard to debate the date of marriage. Why? Because the province of Ontario issues the marriage certificate. So it's very easy to find that part out. The part that's hard to find out in all cases is when did they split up? The question varies depending on who you ask. For example, he may say, we split up a week after we got married, um, although she lived in my home, slept in different beds, didn't engage in sexual intercourse, or maybe we did, but it was only sex and it wasn't about our love for one another and it wasn't a marital type relationship, it was just more of a two casual friends having casual sex. She may say, no, 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 I've loved him throughout, I've always loved him. In fact, from what I understand from the media reports, she still claims that she loves this man, right. despite the fact that uh, he did what he did to her and failing to disclose the fact that he uh, was a multimillionaire while he um, invited her to go and share a hotel room with him one night without her even knowing about the million dollar winning. So we'll never know what the truth is, but from a purely legal standpoint, the date of separation is typically the date that closes the chapter on what property is to be divided. So if he can convince a judge that the date of separation was before he won the lottery, then she wouldn't be able to uh, succeed in, in getting half of that money. If she can convince a judge that, no, 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 they were still together after he won the lottery because they lived together or engaged in romantic relations or held themselves out to the community, to their family, to their friends as a couple after he won the lottery, then that money is, is shared family property. The Ontario Family Law Act has different sections and the sections have different definitions of what a spouse is. And depending on the section, and each section deals with a different remedy. For example, one section deals with the matrimonial home, the home that the couple lives in. One section deals with property division. One section deals with support. Each section has a varied definition of what a spouse is. So if you don't fall within the definition of spouse, then you don't have a right to the remedy that that section provides. So for example, um, for support, you don't have to be married to be able to seek spousal support from your spouse or your ex-spouse, so long as you are uh, either married or, if not married, living together for a period of three years or more, or have a child in common. If you fall into one of those three categories, you can claim spousal support, even though you're not married. If you want to claim a right to a home, a matrimonial home, or a right to a division of property, which is the sebesky Ionson case, it's dealing with property because the $30 million is, is regarded as property. In those situations, if you're an unmarried common law spouse, there is no direct right to a division of that property. There have been many cases over the years where people say, look, we've been together for 25 years, We've had three children together. We've owned properties. We've sold properties. We've moved on to other properties. For argument's sake, we look like any other family who are married. We just never went to the license office to get a marriage certificate. But in effect, we're like a family. We're married. We are a family, not like a family. We're, we're, we're just not married, excuse me. So when they split up, there's been cases where the mother or the, the father, the husband or the wife will sue the other person and say, I want a division of the assets that we accumulated together. Most of it are in your name or most of it are in his name or her name. And the Supreme Court of Canada came down with a ruling a couple of years ago that simply said this, people make a conscious decision to marry or not to marry. And if provincial law says that unless you're married, there is no right to a division of property, that's the couple's choice when they decided to cohabit and choose not to marry. And if they choose not to marry, and provincial law is such that if you're not married, you don't have a right to a division of family property, then that is the bed that you made and you're going to sleep in it. No pun intended.